This is Jackie Helvey, and I'm here today with Randy Haven O'Donnell. Hey, Randy. Hey, Jackie. Uh, Randy is on the Carborough Town Council, and um, we think that you should know her a little better. So, Randy, tell us a little bit about your uh, history with Carborough. With Carborough. Well, first I want to say thank you for inviting me to uh, Wait, I'm Not Done Yet. Uh, wait, I'm Not Done Yet probably is the slogan of my life. Um, <laughs> and so many people our age, I think. We're not done. We're you not know? done. We're not done. I wasn't done when I was 18. Right. So uh, I certainly am not done now. Um, what do I want uh, folks to know about me? Well, first and foremost, um, you know, there's some back back in the day stuff that uh, I think informs who I've been throughout my life, and I wanted to share a little bit about that, if I may. Uh -huh. um, uh, I had been involved with uh, community organizing and action since I was in my teens. Uh, so back in 1968, and I'm just gonna. This is my. This is my bandana of. Um, badges and buttons um, so that I never forget my... Oh, that's so uh, cool. <laughs> I'll tell you just a little bit about them, but um, so that I never forget uh, the things that matter most to me, uh, social justice and um, uh, equity, of course, and um, science and environmentalism uh, are key. And you were a teacher for years. And for years. So, mm -hmm. you know, I finally graduated from teaching. But right here I have a button um, from the 1968 Poor People's Campaign uh, oh, wow. that I was part of. Yeah, uh, I marched with Coretta Scott King. Um, and where were you when this was going on? I was, uh, I'm a former New Yorker. Okay. So, like the epicenter of um, progressive politics and um, labor um, efforts, and so um, I was involved with the Poor People's Campaign, and um, and that taught me an awful lot about community organizing and uh, the importance of community action and uh, engagement and participation in uh, uh, the uh, democratic process. Um, and I from also, people of all walks of life, too, I would think. Absolutely. Uh, and so so I also I have my um, Black Power button. This is going way back. You, may, you remember seeing this? Oh, wow. Yeah. So marching with um, folks in support of, of uh, Black Power back in the day, uh, the women's movement. This is um, also from 68, 69, 70. Wow. Um, so early um, feminist uh, engagement and action. Remember this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This one I actually uh, I bought when I was maybe, I don't know, in my teens. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but I'm sharing those because I think, um, oh, and, and of course, Earth Day. Um, and being engaged in the first Earth Day. That's so wild that you've kept all those. Well, it's a, it's a way of, um, for me, to be able to say, I'm holding to these ideals. It makes concrete all of the things that I have stood for and that I continue to stand for, regardless of the changes that happen around them. Right. And how many steps um, forward we make, but all of the steps we end up getting pushed back, which we're seeing right now. Right. Um, and how much that has informed my uh, my my career as an educator, uh, as a um, environmentalist, uh, as a um, community leader. Right, and of course, as a certified uh, diversity trainer, and and that's what brought me to um, community leadership in Carborough. Um, I. Um, I want to say this about Carborough. I knew about Carborough before I knew about Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, back in New York, uh, back in the uh, late 60s and 70s, I knew about Libba Cotton mm -hmm. because um, uh, one of the things that Pete Seeger was involved with was cleaning up the Hudson River. 
And um, so I learned about Libba Cotton from uh, Pete Seeger and his music, and that led me to her music. So when I came to this area um, in 77, 78, um, and I, I knew about Carborough, uh, I was immediately attracted. Carborough then is not who she is today, mm -hmm. uh, and we've worked very hard to uh, have her uh, move to and um, progress in uh, leading edge um, thought leader ways uh, and I, I say that because it's it's not easy moving um, uh, people uh, to to see uh, the importance of change I'll give you a very concrete example um, from work that I had done in the Chapel Hill Carver City Schools when I was an educator there and that was in creating um, community uh, recycling, composting, and uh, gardening. Um, I worked with Blair Pollock, and Blair has just retired. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Blair, for your service. Um, you know, he, he started the, um, the program for Orange County, and um, we were able to get people engaged and excited in understanding the importance of recycling and solid waste management, mm -hmm. but we also had folks who started to move into gardening and composting uh, because it was a waste diversion technique. Um, that's a very concrete example of how Carborough started to open up to other ways of looking at the environment. Right. Um, and then we, we think mm -hmm. about all of the um, the ways that Carborough progressed in terms of LGBTQ rights, in terms of um, uh, black, brown, BIPOC businesses and, um, and uh, racial justice. Um, uh, uh, Jackie Gist had um, proposed the truth plaque, which is critical to starting the conversation about where is the truth and how do we honor it. So. Um, Carborough really is a community that is open to listening and open to uh, leading the way and modeling the way. And we didn't get here uh, in one day. It took a long time for us to arrive at the point of which we were truly welcoming, where we were um, engaging in a welcoming way. Uh, Carborough Connects right now uh, is looking at the long-range planning for Carborough. Mm -hmm. uh, I think more people have been engaged with Carborough Connects than ever before, uh, but we have a long way to go. Right. There are still so many people whose voices are not at the table and they're not being heard. So uh, my uh, interest in running for re-election uh, is based on deepening and widening the engagement uh, because of my work with racial equity and my work with the um, community safety and my work even at the state level with uh, environmental uh, race and equity and justice. Um, so these are things that are important to me. I see that our Carborough Community Climate Action Plan is now at the uh, leading edge of being involved in neighborhoods and green neighborhoods. Um, I created uh, six uh, education modules that community folks have um, developed the content for that are part of the Community Climate Action Plan, so I'm, I'm very proud of the the fact that I can act as a uh, an architect for work that the community does and shares out not only with Carborough but shares with the county mm -hmm. and um, and regionally um, because the these modules the education modules whether it be on uh, transportation solid waste uh, uh, local ecosystem um, and composting. Uh, let me think of uh, stormwater, um, food choices, mm -hmm. all of those uh, kinds of modules are ones that can be adapted generically 
throughout communities right. so that a, um, a presentation that's done uh, in Carborough can re be replicated in, um, you know, out in uh, eastern North Carolina. Right. Um, so it's very exciting to be engaged, um, but we're at a critical moment on a planetary uh, level. We're at a critical moment nationally in terms of our democracy and um, truly protecting the right to vote and the, um, the ability and access to voting. And uh, it, it, it takes experience, it takes know-how, and it takes deep commitment uh, to the community. Yeah, I don't think people really, I'm glad you mentioned all that because people don't realize what it takes to help run a town. You know, you don't just, you don't just get up there without any knowledge and uh, do it. Uh, how long have you been on the on the uh, town council? Yeah, Randy? the first the first cycle that I ran for was in 2005, so I was seated in 2006, and I have to honor um, Ellie Kinnaird, Shirley Marshall, Melva Oaken, Mary Wakeford, and dear Diana McDuffie invited me to a coffee and recruited me That's funny. to run. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and Frances Shetley, um, you know, she invited me to her kitchen table to talk about, you know, kitchen table. Well, and you know, some of those women were women who had a huge impact on my career also. So Did they? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Ellie and Diana and Shirley. I mean, they, they launched my career career as a web designer. Isn't that funny? That, yes. Well, they were women who who sort of could foresee the future and, and you know, back in that day, they, you know, there weren't a lot of women involved in politics and there just weren't a lot of powerful women out there. And they were some who really made a difference in this community, you know. Well, they understood one of the most important things that, um, about women in, in working through power, that women can empower other women. Right. Um, you know, Dolores Bailey and I were in uh, leadership uh, training together, in Leadership Triangle, and Dolores and I, had we have had endless conversations about voice, and that one of the things that women always say when they are uncertain is, well, I haven't found my voice. Right. And um, and it's it's very important to uplift each other's voice. Exactly. Well, I had no idea you had been on the board for that long. Uh, time flies. <laughs> yeah, it does. But the, I mean, it's look. I think it was 2006 or 2007 that I was first involved with the greenhouse gas uh, inventory for Orange County. Right. And it's like, are we only here now? Yeah. We, we, were, yeah. we were talking about this then. I mean, it's like things are slow. And, and it, when it comes to government, it's just a snail's pace to get anything done. It is. It is um, um, because it's uh, because essentially you, you, policy isn't about writing policy and putting it on the shelf. Not to me. Policy has to be enacted by the people in the community. Right. And it takes time, as, as I gave in my example with the recycling, you know, it takes time for, for folks to, um, you know, uh, warm up to new ideas. I mean, you, you can have leadership for new ideas, you can have visioning, but, you know, you need to enable the heart. You know, to me, leadership comes down to, um, to five Kuzes and, and Posner principles. One, modeling the way. Two, uh, in, inspiring others to act. Three, challenging the process, which a lot of us are really good at that, right? Right. Um, four, enabling the heart. And um, five, uh, engaging others so that they can act. Well, you have done all that and more, Randy. And 
I want you to know how much I appreciate how much you care about Carborough and um, your forward thinking vision because it's people like you that have brought us to where we are today and continued success. Well, Carborough is my verb town. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.